other thing I was fascinated with was this particular shadow. I have a quote from Steve Reich, mm -hmm. and it's in that vein of the relationship between music and dance, and he said, I've also felt, always felt, that what I do is danceable because sometimes while composing, I dance while I'm doing oh. it. Interesting. So when you heard, when you heard yeah. Steve Reich's drumming, was it an invitation to dance for you? Yes, I should say first it was an invitation from Walter Boudreau, the, to the conductor. The, the, the conductor, to do something on that music. And uh, it was the second time that I did something on his music. And I like it very much because the repetition leaves space to the, the, the own uh, rhythm of the dance. And um, of course we can create repetition with the movement, but we can also have our own construction and we can have our own rhythm through that, the rhythm of the music and it, it can mix together really well. This is an interesting question, Philip. I'm going to ask you at first. Uh, this idea, you've got a sole rhythmic motif of, I was trying to count, it seems like less than two seconds that you're working with. Uh, how, do you, how do you take up that kind of challenge when you're a musician? Well, I've played a lot of repetitive music, having played in some rock bands, but this is really an extreme <laughs> version of that. It's, uh, it's very simple. The rhythm that we play is tekadatta, tekadatta, and that's it. That's basically the whole piece right there, played on various instruments. Um, now, it's an incredible challenge because even though it is very simple, your mind tends to want to wander, you know, so you really have to stay focused and really alert. Like, I would like to watch the dancers, but I can't really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this, is, this piece definitely is a challenge, and it's, um, there is another aspect to this piece. It, it has a very simple rhythm, but maybe you notice in the piece that at one point, uh, the musicians are playing together, and then all of a sudden, they're not playing together, and then suddenly there's a new rhythm that is created. So this is a phasing effect where one, music, one musician actually accelerates uh, while one, well, the other one stays stable. So that creates a new pattern when you get into the next uh, eighth note in musical terms. Which yeah. I think, Robert, from a dancer's point of view, is extremely <laughs> challenging because what we're talking about is music in triple time. And it seems yeah. to me the dance is in double time. So how do you, as a dancer, keep going with the rhythm? Well, it's, uh, sometimes it's just a lot of vis visuals also that we have, and we have our own rhythm, but often also we have the, the music is going one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, and we're going one, two. So sometimes it's all like we're not necessarily going with the music, so it's quite a challenge to uh, listen to what's going on with the music and figure out your own group rhythm within that on stage. Again, to the, co to the choreographer. So. You've got all these constructs, you've got all these incredible, it's a matrix, it seems like a matrix. Mm -hmm. How do you build that kind of material? How do you begin to construct both group activity, solo activity, duets that are going on, and work with the musicians? Yeah, I would say, um, like the music, I don't have so many movements in the piece. What makes it look very uh, complex is the, the different patterns I will use with the different dancers, different group, male, female, uh, the whole group, all together, not together. So that what you know was a, a little bit complicated to uh, create. Mm. But um, I would say the music was the beginning of the creation for me. It was the first time I created a choreography from the music. From a score. From a score, yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually we have the score composed at the end of the choreography. Um, but I didn't want to follow the exact rhythm, or, but of course we get um, taken by the pulse of the music because it's so strong, so... Mm. 
so physical in mm -hmm. a way mm -hmm. that uh, I didn't have choice. I had to play with, with that kind of natural rhythm. Philip, it's so interesting to me because, again, his music, Reich's music, it's so complex. You've got, as you described it, the shifting sections, but you've got these graduated dynamics and volume. There's volume to the, the, the volume that shapes the musical phrases, and I think volume that shapes the, the dance phrases as well. Just talk a little bit about those dynamics. Yeah, the, the dynamics in the piece are uh, partially created just by the, the, the number of people that are playing at the same time. I mean, sometimes you have, like a, at the end is a very good example, you have the glockenspiel that plays one note. And then gradually you start adding different instruments and more notes and then it just kind of builds up, you know, like we have 12 people playing at the same time, but it, the, the result is, is larger than anything you could think of. I mean, it's, it's all these sounds mixed together and they create something bigger than each one of their parts. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested again in how you've created constellations. It's like these little worlds that you have, which are terrific, terrifically interesting. Um, but essentially you've got two spaces yeah. on stage. Talk a little bit about yeah. that. Uh, the surround space is for the slow motion and the center is for the fast movement. Um, to me it's like yin and yang or night and day or whatever you want but I needed both sides of the dance emotion maybe or the dance qualities mm -hmm. to play with that kind of music because we have lots of softness but at the same time in the music lots of you know grounded uh, rhythm um, so that's why I wanted to so the, the structure of the piece is based on those two spaces mm -hmm. as a dancer being able to shift from what we'll call the fast space to the slow mm -hmm. space. What challenges does that pose for you? Well, what's, what's really nice about this piece is that you start uh, in the voyage and you just, you let yourself go and it's almost like a meditation because it's just nonstop and you, you have a chance to, um, to uh, you feel that you're always adding layers of what's going on. There's something going on and then something's going to leave and you add to that. And you a bit like the music, you feel like you're always adding to what's going on. And then when you uh, go on the side and you you end up having this the same type of energy but all kind of contained with inside. So you just take all this energy that explodes and you just like... Whoosh, mm. you keep it trapped in your body and then until it's time to go again. Wow. I want to ask you about the male duet because it's a central part of mm -hmm. this piece and we are here at Jacob's Pillow with the history of Ted Sean and men dancers. Talk a little bit about why you felt you wanted to create such a strong male duet. I guess that piece, like a lot of my uh, choreographies, is about uh, relationship. And I wanted to explore, uh, instead of men, women kind of lifting and partnering, the... the Which are very famous. Yeah. I wanted to have another kind of energy with two male dancers, but something that would be slow, because in fact, they dance in the fast space, but... <laughs> slow motion for the only time <laughs> I reverse the space for that section and uh, for me it was very important to do it with two male dancers mm. to have that kind of grounded and um, force yeah, it, power power strong power strong yeah. and uh, something that is would be yang like ah. into the floor yeah. mm. does Reich reveal an aspect of your personality? <laughs> <laughs> Philip. Um, as a younger musician, I wasn't really so attracted to what is called minimalist music. As a, a student, I just wanted to go more. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn complex music. But um, having played this piece many times now, I discovered that this idea of actual minimal music is 
it's a scam. It's not actually real. <laughs> because the result is really a maximal kind of music. And I never thought I would be attracted to this music. And uh, it's something that was really revealed to me as, I'm, as I started playing this piece. Yeah. Hmm. Robert, does Reich reveal an aspect of your personality? Well, for me, it's fairly simple. It's just uh, trust yourself, stay in the moment, and let yourself go into the voyage. Because if you try to think ahead too much of what's in front, you just, I, you know, it's very uh, scary for me. So I have to just kind of trust myself and be in the moment and just go with that voyage. Jeanette. Um, for me, it's such a great piece, and it's so, so wonderful to have a chance to do it with the musicians on stage. Tonight was really, really good. You, you saw a good show, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but Bravo. it's so powerful with, with yeah. the music, with the musicians on stage. Mm -hmm.